Alright, ready when you are. I've driven a fair few cars in my day, and in the quest to find the best one, I've decided it doesn't exist, so we built it. Say hello to the Scuffmobile. It's a piece of garbage, literally. Last summer, we had the crackpot idea to build a go-kart with a lawnmower engine, but we didn't really know where to start. So we went looking online and we found this video. Shout out to those gents. Right off the bat, after watching that video, we knew there were a few things we wanted to do differently. One of the big ones that we knew we wanted to change right from the get-go was we wanted to, rather than have a one-wheel drive system, we knew we wanted a two-wheel drive, live rear axle, rear-wheel drive setup, which is what we ended up doing. Then we realized that the platform that I built this on was way bigger than what we wanted. We wanted to trick as much as possible and conserve as much space as possible to save weight. Because they had a lot of dead space in between where the driver was sitting and where the engine was mounted. We knew we wanted to change that. So in our cart, you're pretty much, your back is pretty much right up against the gas tank. Uh, ideally, this would reduce weight and it would reduce the size, which makes it a little bit more nimble and nicer. While we did want to use the same steering system as them originally, which would have kept the car smaller, we ended up abandoning that after an unfortunate crash. I'm slow to get away from him, so he was over there. He gave it too much throttle. I think the chain caught up to him. And he slammed into that back driver's side tire of the van. The front axle was boned, super boned. It held up. Which brought us to use this system with a legitimate steering wheel and these tie rods that allow us to turn it more like a traditional go-kart. That was one of our bigger departures from the original style that they had in their video. However, we retained the original attachment mechanism from the original video, which is Stop sign material is what we call it. It's two L brackets put together of a bent sheet metal with holes drilled into it. They used to attach the wheels to this little piece of wood right here. It goes underneath the cart and swivels back and forth to allow for steering. Our entire inspiration for the chassis itself was from the video. We used a flat piece of plywood with two by sixes running one here, one on the edge, and then one big one we call the spot. This is where we mount everything on. This is where we put the uh, attachment points for the turning bits as well as the bumper and then uh, across the cart we have 2x4s reinforcing from the bottom. Eventually we decided that was enough support so we added some angle bracket, aluminum, and iron as well. We decided that since we were going to be so close against the gas tank and there was a decent likelihood that a heavier individual might uh, lean back and make contact with the gas tank, we decided to add some jute which is you can see some of it here, this soft material. It's supposed to be a packing substitute that's made of bamboo fibers. This came from a Zingerman's package. Shout out Zingerman's. They make good meat. Yeah. So we decided that jute would be a good cushion since we have no suspension on any of the four corners. But The suspension is the flex in the wood. The original design took inspiration from the video we saw in the beginning for the uh, thrall and brake. It, we ended up using uh, handlebars throttle but that we broke then I moved to uh, bars down here those broke as well and now we're on to these pedals which have very very strong door hinges attached to 2x4 plywood with a bit of grip tape on them and it goes back to a cable you used originally for a bike they harvested from a bike back to that mechanism back there 
And for the brake setup, we originally started with, we had a handle down at the side to our left that you would pull to actuate the brake. Ours has not actually evolved all that much from there. It's a very, it's a straight line, straight from the brake pedal all the way back to the brake, and we're using drum, a single drum brake uh, to brake the entire rear axle. Um, and while it doesn't provide excellent braking force, it provides enough to uh, slow us down. So we originally wanted to use a vertical shaft lawnmower engine, but we decided it would be too difficult to use a differential to convert that to a horizontal shaft for the axle. Uh, so what we ended up going with was a horizontal shaft snowblower motor. This is a Tecumseh HMSK80. It's a one cylinder. It's got 318.46 cubic centimeters of displacement a red line of 2,800 RPM, and it makes about 8 horsepower, which is more than a lot of lawnmower engines. The ones we were looking at were between like 5 and 7, and it's more than some of the crate engines, one-cylinder crate engines we were looking at. So it's a pretty st strong power plant. We haven't had any issues with it. It has both a crank start and an electric start, which is quite nice. Um, it's done quite well for us. Oh, and it shoots flames. Also, did I mention that it's air-cooled? Like a Porsche. Like a Porsche! A couple other little things. We added a seat belt for safety to make our mothers happy. Um, we've stuck with the same wheel and tire setup pretty much all the way through. A very similar one to what they used in that original video. We did switch compounds on the rear tires, though, because we kept wearing through them, which was a lot of fun, but they kept blowing up. We, for the steering wheel setup, we just bought a go-kart steering wheel off Amazon. Used this, I don't know, where'd you find this rod? I have no idea. We got this bracing all figured out to keep it stable. We debated a lot in the beginning whether we would go with wood or metal. Wood we prefer, because we can add on things that we need, such as a support for the throttle, support for throttle in the back, or support for the brake line. We just put these towers in when we need them. Super easy, way easier than metal. Yeah, and on that same note, originally we went with wood. Uh, because it was more cost effective, or we figured it would be more cost effective. And this, we started this project back when lumber was cheaper than it has been recently. We originally envisioned this project costing us about $150, and we do think if you knew what you were doing, this is a very reasonable project to build for $150. You know, I I'd, I'd guess we've probably spent more like $300 altogether, but we've made a lot of mistakes. We've bought a yeah. lot of sets of wheels and tires. A lot of stuff we put on the cart then took off. A lot of stuff we put on it then promptly broke. Uh, we went through two chain tensioners and neither one is on the cart right now. There's a lot of little things that we spent a lot of money on that we didn't need. And a lot of things we spent a lot of money on that broke. But I think this is a very reasonable, a build like this could very reasonably be done for $150. If you knew what you were doing and you had a vision from the beginning. We didn't really have that, but it's here now. The main thing we've learned is if you don't have the money to do it yourself, don't cheap out. We would save a lot of headache if we just bought proper wheels for the rear end, proper sprocket, proper all of that. And we didn't spend so much time welding and braking and welding and braking and welding and braking, blowing tires, repairing tires, putting tires back on, same with our messed up bolt pattern. All right, let's see what it can do. We are here at the McLaren headquarters in Woking, England, here to put this machine to the ultimate test.
Since we were inspired by a video we found on the internet, we were hoping that this video would inspire some fellow motivated individuals to come up with their own ideas for some motorized transportation. If you've got a good idea, you should come show it off. Consider this a challenge. Nick, Nick, what do you what do you have to say to your audience? Stay in drugs. <laughs>